In this video, you're gonna learn more about intermittent fasting, block fasting, and why our cells, the DNA in our cells, are designed for periods of fasting and periods of feasting. I'm gonna break down the science behind it, and I'm gonna break down some simple ways for you to practice intermittent fasting so you could extend life, so you could have natural energy levels throughout the day, so you could burn fat, bring down inflammation, and so many more benefits. So I'm gonna share that in this live stream and then I'm gonna answer your questions for you. I wanna say hello and happy Wednesday to you keto campers out there. Uh, I'm grateful to be here with you today. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm a certified functional health practitioner, best-selling author of three books, and I'm on a mission to educate one billion people. Let me pull up the comments here on my laptop. If you're joining me right now, please say hello and let me know where you're watching from. I see the GOAT is on here, the GOAT of Fitness, GC3 Fitness. Make sure you go give him a follow. He's the person I study when it comes to fitness and performance. So GC3 Fitness, what's up, brother? Uh, let's pull up the questions here. Let me know if you have any questions as I give you this coaching here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about intermittent fasting. What is intermittent fasting? Well, intermittent fasting is not something you do. Intermittent fasting is something you don't do. You don't eat, you don't put food in your mouth. You give your body a period of time without consuming food. I see all the comments in there. Hello, hello, welcome everybody. So grateful to have you here with me today. When we look, when we study ancient culture, let's go back hundreds of, of years, or I should even say millions of years. When we look back, at ancient culture for millions of years, what do we see? We see that our ancestors, they went periods of time without food. They did this not by choice, they did it because their environment forced, forced them into to fasting. They didn't have the luxury that we do uh, on this day and age. And if you're watching this, you probably live in a, in a country where you ha are blessed to have food readily available to you. And if you live in the United States like I do, you could just grab your cell phone Go to the Uber Eats app, order some food, 30 minutes later, later you have a, a millennial knocking on your door with food. We have this luxury, but you gotta keep in mind that we didn't have this for so many years. So when you look at the body, at a cellular level, we're made up of 70 trillion cells, and when you look at the body at a cellular level, we have our DNA in our genes, that we cannot change the DNA that we're born with, but we can change the expression of those genes via a process called epigenetics. So when you look at your genes, the genes you're born with, they load the gun. But your environment, the food you put in your mouth, the thoughts that you think, your lifestyle determines whether or not you pull the trigger on your genes. So let's compare that, let's, let's relate that to fasting. We know, and science has confirmed it time after time after time. Fasting is so beneficial at a cellular level. Our cells are built for feast famine cycles because it forces adaptation, it mimics our ancestors. So when we practice intermittent fasting, and keep in mind, intermittent fasting is not about eating less. Intermittent fasting is about eating less often, going a period of time without digesting food because it takes massive amounts of energy, and resources and blood flow to digest food, from the chewing of the food, from the digestion of the food, from taking the macronutrients and putting it and transferring it into micronutrients. It takes a lot of energy. And in this day and age, in America especially, we're in a constant fed state. And when you're in a constant fed state, that is not optimal for your cells because your cells start to think, oh, there's good times happening here, let's, let's start duplicating ourselves, let's start storing fat cells, and we get disease, and we get sickness. And I, I've seen this time after time, and we look at diabetes in America, diabetes is such an epidemic, 60% uh, of Americans are either a diabetic or pre-diabetic, a lot of people are not even aware they're diabetic. Every six seconds, somebody is dying from diabetes. All right, let that sink in for a second. I've been on this live stream for about five minutes. There have been several people who have died from diabetes. We need to put an end to this. And how do you put an end to this? Well, intermittent fasting and keto are two powerful ways to combat disease. 
Because when you're not using all of your energy, when you're not using all these resources to digest food, where is it going, keto campers? It's going to repair the body, to heal your digestive system, to give you energy and focus so you can go out there into the wild and hunt and kill your next meal. But here's the hack. We are privileged to have a refrigerator stock full of food. We're going to use the energy and resources to crush our day. So I want to know for the for those of you on here right now, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you've gotten any value from the Keto Camp YouTube channel. Uh, I'm grateful to be here with you today. Who on here, if you practice intermittent fasting currently, so you fast for at least 12 hours every day, I want you to put an IF in the chat box. Uh, if you practice intermittent fasting, put an IF in the chat box. I want to see who on here practices intermittent fasting? Awesome, Gary. He's doing a 24-hour fast. I love it. I see it. Tammy practices it. I love it. Of course, GC practices that. All right. I love it. I love it. Great. So here's the key. Because we know that studies, studies show that caloric restriction extends life. But we don't want to extend life and slow down the metabolism and, and have our hormones all, all wonky. So how do you get the benefits of caloric restriction without necessarily restricting calories? You do it with intermittent fasting because you're able to follow that feast famine approach. I see many of you are doing intermittent fasting. I love it. And I see Rob's on here as well. Hello, Rob. So here's the deal. You want to make sure that when you are eating, you're feasting. You're not just pushing food away and eating a couple bites. When we follow the feast famine cycles, that's when your mitochondria get stronger. Mitochondrial fitness. That's when your cells get stronger. Here's an important teaching, an important note for anybody watching this right now. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. I want you to remember this line, keto campers. When you create this adaptation through keto, through fasting, good cells that you have in your body Good cells get stronger. Bad cells that you have in your body, bad cells do not adapt. Good cells get stronger, bad cells don't adapt. Good cells get stronger, bad cells don't adapt. So I want that really to just stick with you right there. So adaptation is key. When you change your diet and you start eating keto and you start practicing fasting, then all of a sudden your cells have to adapt to that forced change that you just created for your body. And then your good cells get stronger. Your mitochondria start um, your mitochondria start producing more ATP, more gasoline for your cell. So you have more energy. You bring down inflammation. Oh, what happens when you bring down inflammation? Now your fat burning hormones could get into your cells, and you can start burning fat for fuel. And you feel good. You live a longer life. So I I, I just love. There's so many benefits to fasting, and feast famine is the way our hormones. Our cells and our body has been set up to live for so many years. I want to get to some of your questions here. Uh, make sure you post your questions in the chat box. I see, I see some questions here. Let me just scroll up real quick before I uh, see if I missed anything. We have Connecticut. We have San Jose. We have Michigan, Montreal, Austin, Texas, Armando. So Armando in Austin, Texas. I just got an email this morning from KetoCon. And they're going to be having an event in 2020, uh, in June, I think, 2020, and they invited me to be a speaker. So I'm potentially going to be a speaker at, at KetoCon in Austin, Texas. I'll keep you all updated on that. Uh, watching from Saudi Arabia. Very cool. Lillian, good to have you on here. Front seat of my Peter built, uh, Long Beach. Well, we have so many cool people. Leilani, good to see you on here. Let me see your questions. Trying to fast every 12 hours. So Ricky, that's a great statement right there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little tip here, Keto Campers. Simple way to fast 12 hours every day, which I believe everybody should be doing that at the bare minimum, is to finish your last bite of food by 8 p.m. Start doing this tonight. So by 8 p.m., you've done eating. You go to bed, you're using sleep as your fasting window, and then you're not eating anything until at least 8 a.m. the following morning. That's a 12-hour fast right there, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, then you can start pushing it out. You can start pushing breakfast to 9 p.m. and then 10 p.m. 
What's gonna make this a lot easier for you, by the way, is gonna be being keto adapted before you practice fasting. That's why keto adaptation, the adapt pillar, is my pillar number one. And then the second pillar is to fast. So if you follow it that way, you're gonna get all the benefits of fasting without any of the symptoms. By the way, if you enjoy my shirts, this one says no time to hate, and I have many other motivational t-shirts. Uh, you can get your very own over at ketocampgear.com. Ketocampgear.com. Okay, let's see what questions you have for me today. Just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I see so many people who practice intermittent fasting. I love it. Praveen says, with my intermittent fasting, my sugar levels are increasing in the morning as dawn effect may be, but how many days until it will continue like that? Well, the dawn effect could be continuously in some people. Uh, I would. What's more important, Praveen, is to keep monitoring your blood sugar and your and if you're doing your ketone levels throughout that fast. So what you want to see if you're testing your blood sugar and ketones, you want to make sure during a fast your glucose goes down and your ketones continuously rise. You want to see that trend during a fast. If you're not seeing that trend, you're probably fasting too soon, and you got to work on your metabolism a little bit more with keto and then try again. If you're seeing during a fast your glucose continuously rise and your ketone either stay down or stay the same, that's not good. We want ketones to go up and glucose to go down. Uh, so the dawn effect could be a reason why you're seeing that. Also, you might be eating too close to bed. So give yourself at least three hours of fasting before bed and that'll make a big difference for your morning routine. You're gonna feel a lot more refreshed. Uh, I'm gonna see, I see more questions here. I'm gonna answer it for you, but before I do, I see that there's 57 people on here live right now at this very moment. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, I only see nine thumbs up, so if you haven't hit the thumbs up, please hit that right now. It helps YouTube show this to more people, and it's gonna help many lives change and practice keto and fasting, which is what we're all about. So hit that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. Tammy Harper says, I'm doing a 20 hour fast today. Most days she does 23 fasting, one hour eating window. So great you do OMAD, Tammy, I love it, great work. I'm going to bump it up to 36 hours, nice Gary. Good work. Chris hasn't eaten since 7 p.m. last night and he's not eating till 4 p.m., I love it. Now that I know many of you practice intermittent fasting, I have another question for you, for those of you who said they do. Do you, do you train, do you exercise in the fasted state? Uh, if you do, type in exercise. If you exercise in the fasted state, type in exercise in the comment section. Hey, Ruth is in the house. Ruth is a fasting machine. 48 to 70 hour intermittent fast. Awesome, Ruth. You're doing great in Guatemala. But you shouldn't do OMAD every day, right? You should mix it up. Yes, Leilani, always, always, always mix it up. I see it in, I know GC3 Fitness, he's ripped by the way. So those of you who didn't see, you didn't hear my comment in the beginning, make sure you follow GC3 Fitness. He's on here right now. He has the best YouTube channel for all things fitness. So if you're interested in fitness, go follow GC3 Fitness. Uh, he's also been here at Keto Camp HQ. He lives not too far from me. I've known him for a very long time. He's an awesome guy. Go follow him. Leilani says you should mix up OMAD. You should always mix it up. You don't want to do too much fasting the same way you don't want to be doing too much um, feasting. So there's a balance there. Does coffee with chocolate break my fast? The coffee may or may not, but the chocolate does for sure. Will sugar-free gum break your fast? No, Laura, it should not, but just make sure the sugar-free gum does not have any aspartame or sucralose in it. Caesar from uh, says, I'm 53 years old, I practice intermittent fasting and 24-hour fast and try to stick to keto, but I hear it is different for older men. Yeah, it's different for everybody. You gotta find a routine that works for you. By the way, um, I, I, have a, I have an update for you before I answer the rest of your questions. I know I spoke about my Keto Camp Academy two weeks ago. I have officially over 70 videos recorded, professionally edited, and uploaded into the Academy. Uh, the Academy is not available yet, but it will be soon. And I want to let you know that there's a lot of progress being made on there. There's going to be sections in the Keto Camp Academy for keto. There's going to be a 28-day 
keto journey in there. So anybody who's new to keto or have fallen off the keto bandwagon and wants to get back in, there's going to be a 28-day structure for you. Uh, and then there's going to be a, a structure for the intermittent fasting and then for block fasting and then keto flexing. So there's going to be all about keto, all about fasting. There's a section all about sleep. How do you optimize your sleep to get better, deep quality sleep? There's going to be a section all about uh, self-development. And I always talk about people say motivation does not last. Well, motivation should be looked at like bathing. That's why it's recommended daily, although I don't uh, bathe daily. Come here. So, so um, one second. <laughs> I wanna, so look, I have a special guest for you guys before I finish talking about it. I have my girlfriend, Natasia, who wants to say hello. She's too short. <laughs> I'm not too short. You're just too tall. Say hello to Natasia. We have 61 people on here with 20 thumbs up. G GC's on here as well. Hi, GC. So this is Natasia. Say hello. She's launching a new YouTube okay. channel soon, so stay tuned for that. And you could follow her on on um, Instagram. They're all saying hello. Feisty Fenbot. So at Feisty Fenbot. F-E-I-S-T-Y. Fenbot. <laughs> Instagram. So she could attest that she does fasting. She does it in the, in the fasted state. Hello, cutie pie. <laughs> oh, hi. So she does intermittent fasting in the in exercise as well. And how has that worked for you? Good. I mean, I usually, I always used to skip breakfast anyways. I've never been a breakfast person. So I was always kind of doing intermittent fasting most of my life without knowing. Um, and at first I, I panicked a bit about like working out in a fasted state since I've always kind of worked out in the evening. But now it's, after you do it a couple of times, it's, it's, yeah. Easy. Like I'm used to it. Like I'll, I won't eat anything in the morning and then I'll go to like a Zumba class and I'll be fine. Um, I like it. Yeah. It's like a muscle. It's mm -hmm. just like exercise is a, it's a muscle you develop literally fasting is like a muscle you develop literally as well. So I was talking about the Academy. Are you going to work out now? You look like you're going to work out. No, I'm just, like, oh. just my, long she's show. going to the, um, she's going to Greece today for 10 days with her mom. So mm -hmm. wish, wish her, if you're, if you're in Greece, if you're watching this from Greece, we have Saudi Arabia, we have um, we have a bunch, we have Southern California. So if you're in Greece, say hello. I'm gonna answer your questions now. Let's get Tell back to the Tell me what question. yummy food I should eat. Yeah, let her know what yummy Bye. food she should eat. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, oh, I, was, I wanna just finish up about the academy before I answer your questions. I see your questions come in. So there's gonna be a section on sleep, self-development, a section on fitness. GC3 Fitness is also gonna make videos for the academy, by the way, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and it's just going to be a great portal with over 100 videos. So that's going to be available soon. I am, am aiming for the next 14 days, maybe sooner. It's going to be a low monthly cost of less than $40 per month. I'm not sure what the exact amount is going to be. It might be $39. It's going to be less than $40 a month. So if you're interested in that, I might be doing a launch for a, the first 100 people to get in at a very discount um, membership, grandfathered in rate, a founder's rate. So if you're interested in getting a founder's rate of the Keto Camp podcast, I want you to type in the chat box just so I get an idea of who's interested. The word founder, founder. If you're interested in getting a founder's rate for the Keto Camp podcast, type in the word founder and I just want to see who's interested in that and you'll be the first to know when I release it. So let's see. Cool. I see all. I see Trish. I see Diane. I see Believer Girl. Hello, Believer Girl. Awesome. 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 Good to know. I see that um, Tammy, Rob, Roberto. Very cool. So Tammy wants to know, what do I think of autophagy fasting? I've been doing this, doing that this week on the advice of Dr. Mindy. I love it. Dr. Mindy is brilliant. She knows what she's doing. Uh, so if you're not following Dr. Mindy Peltz, P-E-L-Z, go follow her. Her YouTube channel is great. She actually just posted a video interviewing me for an hour, uh, 45 minutes on her channel, which I might upload on my channel. Uh, I probably will upload on my channel. So go check it out. Tammy, to answer your question, I like autophagy fasting. Mindy knows what she's doing. We have Abu Dhabi in the house. Um, we have Georgia. We have, oh yeah, fat burner, not sugar burner. I might have said it backwards. I always said say that backwards. Best health channel. Can't wait to see the channel hit 1 million. Thank you, GC. I love you, bro. 
Oh, Will Block in the house. Hey, Will, good to see you on here, man. On vacation. Well, enjoy your vacation. We have Paul who just finished up a 72-hour fast. Your info is great. Thanks a million, Paul. My pleasure. Can I do OMAD every day? I don't think it's it's a good idea to do OMAD every day long term. OMAD, if you don't know what that stands for, uh, stands for one meal a day, uh, one meal per day, OMAD. If you have a lot of weight to lose, then you could do it for a few months, but you don't want too much autophagy because autophagy is what you get through fasting, which is catabolic, you're breaking down cells, you're cleaning up cells. That's great, but you don't want too much of that. So I would always switch up the OMAD and if you're noticing, you know, you're, you're cold all the time, your hormones are wonky, especially if you're having a monthly cycle, uh, do not do OMAD that week leading up to your cycle. Cool. I see people, a lot of people exercise with MCT. I like that. Thanks, Ben. You're welcome, Leilani. We have New Zealand in the house. Love keto. I love it. Sorry, I forgot to add chocolate flavor collagen with coffee. Yeah, collagen will break the fast because it has protein. It will break the fast. Everybody's saying hi. She's pretty. She is pretty. One year plus three weeks keto. Hey, oh, awesome, Jen, Jerry. I love that in West Virginia. Hello, she's a cutie. Yes, yeah, she is, Laura. Good to see you, Laura. Hello, Natasha. She's so beautiful. Yes, she is. Where did you get your workout bra? Oh, I will ask her. She posts a lot of the stuff that she all, all like she has a fashion uh, Instagram blog over at Feisty Fembot. So you could ask her directly. So um, who asked the question? Snowball, Feisty Fembot. Ricky says, what's the best thing to eat? Uh, when you break a fast or just in general, when you break a fast, you wanna stick with protein and fat as a good rule of thumb. You don't wanna break your fast with carbs and fat. That's probably the worst thing to do. Uh, a section on healthy relationships. That is my specialty, what I teach. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's important. I see all the founders. Cool, cool, cool. I'm, I'm glad that you're interested in the founders rates of the academy. You'll hear about that. If you're not on my email list, my email list is probably going to hear first about that, uh, along with the Keto Camp YouTube channel. So if you want to get my Get my keto kickstart guide or my fasting guide and you'll get added to my email list. So if you go to www.ketokickstartguide.com or fastingcheatsheet.com, you could get that guide and get added to my list. Okay, what questions do I have here? I have one more question, says Tammy. While autophagy fasting, I have my collagen powder, so do I include that protein and fat into my macros for the day? Yes, Tammy, you would include that into your macros for the day. It shouldn't be a lot, but I would include it. Awesome, Tiffany. I see the founder comment. Will still cut oatmeal, break the fast? Yes, Ernie, it will. Anything that, that raises your glucose and insulin will break your fast. So anything that has carbohydrates and protein, if, it, if you have carbohydrates and protein, which oatmeal does, it breaks your fast because insulin goes up, autophagy goes down. We have Arnold in Virginia. I'm 71 years old and have recently lost 68 pounds on keto. Love it. Only do intermittent fasting. Arnold, that's amazing. 68 pounds at 71 years old. Congratulations. I just love, I love seeing that. Uh, let's see if I don't think I missed. I have been cutting out protein or should I eat the bare minimum? Protein's important. Don't cut your protein too much. Uh, the general rule of thumb is 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And when I say body weight, your ideal body weight, that's good. What is your recommendation for detox? Detox is a long answer, uh, believe, believer girl. Detox is very important. And when we talk about detox, and when I talk about detox, I'm talking about detox at a cellular level. Okay, I'm not talking about a 10-day a cleanse or something like that. When we, if you, true detox, True detox occurs at the cellular level. I would start with a couple things for detox. I would start with the fasting trio. The fasting trio is great, uh, which you could get over at ketocampsupplements.com. So I would start with the fasting trio, and then I would get the prep phase box as well. That's a good start for you for the next 30 days. Uh, but detox is very specific to the person. You know, you have to figure out your, your neurotoxic um, how toxic are you? So if you, if you want to go to 
ToxicMiami.com. I have a free toxicity quiz, even if you don't live in Miami, to determine your level of toxicity. It's either low, medium, or high. So that would be a good idea, a good, a good baseline for you to start with. If you go to ToxicMiami.com and get that or take that quiz, it's a free quiz. You'll learn your, your, um, your level. I feel cold doing OMAD. I will try 420 next week. Awesome. Yeah, change it up. It's always a good idea. Hello there from Kenya. We've got Kenya in the house. Jerry says, inflammation. Um, oh, I can. I did keto to help with the pain. Any foods to help with inflammation? Yeah, you know what's so fascinating? So I just interviewed, um, I just interviewed Clint Ober f- for my Keto Camp podcast yesterday. That episode will be released later on in October or early November. And he is the author of this book, Earthing, and the they have this documentary which is called The Earthing Movie, uh, earthingmovie.com, all about grounding. And the reason I bring this up, Jerry, is because when you ground, when you literally just put your bare feet or hands on Mother Nature, on Mother Earth, it really brings down inflammation. It, it thins your blood. It ha- it's an electron donor. And we go deep into how that actually relates to inflammation. So that's one way to do it. Just simply grounding each day. I have a video on my channel, Five Amazing Benefits of Grounding. Has anybody seen that? If you've seen that video, uh, type in grounding. If you've seen my video on Five Amazing Benefits of Grounding. But I'll post it after I'm done here in the co- in the notes down below. Anybody watching a replay could see that. So foods that help with inflammation are going to be MCT oil. Just go low and slow. Uh, I also have five my top five anti-inflammatory foods video as well. Uh, on my channel, so you can watch that. But I would go with MCT oil, bone broth. Bone broth is great. Kettle and Fire makes a great bone broth. If you, if you buy Kettle and Fire online and use Keto Camp, you'll get 15% off. Um, what else do we have? We have fermented foods. I like sauerkraut, helps with the gut. I also like turmeric. Turmeric is great. Uh, ginger, ginger is great. These are all, all great foods to bring down inflammation. And go watch my video, Top 5 Anti-Inflammatory Foods on my channel. As well, I see Believer Girl and Lillian has seen my video. I love it. Uh, and speaking of the Keto Camp podcast, I just released episode 37 this morning. Uh, it's a great podcast episode. It's a great podcast in general. And if you're not listening to the podcast yet, go listen to it. The one this morning, uh, it's going to be all about... Sorry, one second here. The one that I posted this morning is episode 37 with Dr. Molly Malouf, who's a medical doctor, and she talks about this epidemic of diabetes and statins and medication. And the quote that I got from there is, when will doctors start prescribing food as medicine? Uh, And she talks all about being food as medicine. So go listen to that podcast episode of the Keto Camp Podcast. It's available on all podcast platforms worldwide. We have iTunes, which is Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, uh, and what's and Spotify. Uh, it's available on all of those. Go listen to that. Carrie, thank you so much for watching my granting video. I'm glad that it was helpful for you. Uh, I see all your videos. I'm your stalker. Laugh out loud. Laura, you're awesome. You always have my back. I appreciate that. And awesome. Ruth has seen it as well. Okay, if you don't know already, I go live every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time on this channel. So set a reminder, who's on here for the first time? Who's on my channel for the first time? Put first timer in the comment section. I want to acknowledge you and say hello. And I also want to let all, there's 68 of you right now know that out of all the things you could be doing right now, all the YouTube channels, anything in the world you could be doing, you spent, you chose to spend your time with me today, at least a small portion of your time today. And I really appreciate that. I'm so grateful for you. I'm really dedicated to bringing you in cutting edge information. I want to help the world. I want to educate 1 billion people. So I just want to let you know how grateful I am for you. So we have a few first timers. We have Snowball. Welcome for the first time. We have Diane. Welcome for the first time. Katie. We have Kay Hudson. We have um, Osa from the UK. We have Rosa, first timer, Wendy, Tiffany, and Will Scott. Thank you so much for joining for the first time. I really hope you got value from this live stream. If you have and you haven't hit the like button, hit it right now. Uh, keto Aldi bread. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the ingredients, uh, but I would I would look for vegetable oils. And if it has vegetable oils, canola, safflower, soybean, then it's not good. 
In how many days can we feel the impact of keto? I am 70 kilograms with I'm a five foot six from in India. Thanks so much for educating so many people worldwide. Well, Praveen, thank you so much. Uh, you should be feeling it within seven days. Seven days is a good marker, but it's gonna be, you know, it takes, it takes a while to get all the results you want, uh, but stick and stay, it's bound to pay. The goal is just to beat yesterday, to beat yesterday, to just chip away and chip away. Uh, but within seven days, you should be feeling better if you do it the right way. I was lo I was at your live with Dr. Mindy at the first time. Oh, Cynthia, awesome. That was a great chat with Dr. Mindy Peltz. Go check out Dr. Mindy Peltz's YouTube channel. Uh, she's doing amazing work. She's a colleague of mine. I love her very much. Uh, awesome. Mickey, first time live. Welcome from Dallas, Vicky. Uh, uh, Mickey, excuse me. First time from Sandra. Tammy says, I love your outlook on health starting following you from watching a live video with Dr. Mindy. Awesome, Tammy. I'm grateful for you. Thank you. Praveen, your first timer as well. 11 Central on Wednesday. That's correct. Dennis, for thank you so much. Uh, Mark, great to hear your thought. Great to hear you're into giving some value back into the world. My question is, cub, cab out car, oh, carb cycling, is it necessary or not? Yeah, I like carb cycling. Carb cycling is important, um, especially if you've been in ketosis for too long. And what's too long? Maybe three months, four months. You got to start having your flex days, your high healthy carb days. So I do like it as a way to remind your body that it's not starving and to continue getting results with keto. Rob Smith added this to his calendar. Awesome, brother. I see how committed you are. I love it. And we have Trish, uh, Trika, Trika, I think I'm saying it right for the first time. Thank you for all that you share. So what what happens to all the extra flesh? Um, with, with fasting, your body burns it for fuel. It burns excess protein. How to break a 72 hour fast. I have a video on how to break a block fast on my channel. So go to my channel, go to the search bar and type in how to break your block fast and you'll see that. You wanna go low and slow. You wanna make sure you have some fermented food. Stay away from animal, animal meat uh, for that first day and hit a certain amount of calories. My wife and I are both on, oh, awesome, Chad and Cynthia, welcome. Thank you for acknowledging us and answering our questions, awesome. Will, I appreciate you, brother. Will's in my Beyond Fasting program uh, for the second time, and he's also, also a coach in there as well. And Will is on vacation, and he's still on here because he's committed. All right, well, I'm gonna go get in a fasted workout, and then I'm dropping off my girlfriend at the airport. She's going to Greece for 10 days. I'm gonna be releasing a brand new video tomorrow, maybe today. I'm gonna, to, actually today, I'm gonna to release a brand new video today that is just, um, here's what I'm gonna do for you, just to give you a heads up. I'm gonna create a new playlist on this channel, which I'm gonna have the most common keto questions I've received over the last six years. I'm gonna answer it, just basic answers, less than two minutes, um, and I'm gonna answer those top questions. I'm gonna put it all into a playlist for keto. And I'm gonna do the same thing for fasting. So stay tuned for that. And then tomorrow I'm releasing a brand new video on um, three reasons why you experience a headache with the keto diet or with fasting and three things to do about it. Have, have you ever experienced the headache with keto and fasting? If you have, you're gonna to wanna to watch that video tomorrow, it'll be released. Tammy, my pleasure, my pleasure. I'm dedicated and committed and if I missed your question, um, I apologize and just put it in the chat box afterwards in the comment section and I'll go in and I read those. Mark said he dropped from 18 stones to 12.6, reverse my diabetes. Wow, Mark, congratulations, brother. That's amazing. Paul says, when I break my when I broke my fast with an avocado and bone broth, waited four hours and had yolk, ribeye cooked in coconut oil. Is that the best way? If it was an intermittent fast, yeah, I like that. But if it was an extended fast, more than three days, I would do all that without the ribeye. That's amazing. I love seeing results like that. Great job, Mark. Okay, guys, uh, Keto Camper, thank you so much for watching this video. Real quick before I get off here, hit the like button. I don't know where it is. Is it here? Is it here? Hit the like button real quick. Let YouTube know that these videos are helpful and it'll help show it to more people and educate more people. Stay tuned for brand new videos. We are releasing five brand new videos on this channel every single week. Go listen to the Keto Camp Podcast. I'm so thankful for all of you. Um, have an amazing, blessed day. Be great. Nothing else pays. Thanks so much.